Hi everyone, welcome back. I've been pretty busy outside most of the summer, so I have been slacking big time on doing some of my crafting videos. But now that in Michigan, it's starting to get cold, leaves are flying all over, coming down, it'll be snowing soon. I'm back in the house starting to do some more scrapbooking. So I thought I'd do a really quick video today and give you a quick overview on the new Halloween album that I did. Uh, I kind of loved the theme of a paper bag album, but I was getting bored with doing them. And just recently, Kathy from Paper Phenomenon came up with a new tutorial and I purchased it a couple weeks ago and um, assembled this album that I want to show you with some old papers from Stampin' Up. I used to be a demonstrator and I have some really cool papers still left that I didn't use all up before. So I'm kind of using up the scraps and doing a new album with a Halloween theme. So please stand by and check it out with me. So this is the front of the album. And what I did here is I just used one of my old Stampin' Up! stamps. I wanted it to look a little bit um, kind of creepy but not in a like a gory way. So I thought it would be nice to just kind of look a little worn out and white. So I used some of the white pigment ink and stamped this and um, cut out the front uh, with one of my die cuts. Let's see if I can show you which one I used. I'm trying to remember here myself. It was one of the flat dies. Um, I think I used the one of the ovals here from the Sizzix Framelits. And then I use this guy for the outside scalloped edge. And so I put this up a little bit on some foam tape, but not too much. I didn't want it to be overly dimensional there. Put a little bit of a ribbon here. And then the binding over here, I made a small little dangle charm. Just had some leftover beads, and I just kind of wired a few together. This is a little ghost I had. This is a little bat that I had. And then I, just for the fun of it, because it's, you know, like skeleton bones almost, I took one of the um, the Tim Holtz little, I, I don't know if they, do, they were like wishbones, I think is how they came packaged. But anyway, they're Tim Holtz and they come in a vial. I just took one out and wire wrapped it like this. And I used one of his um, chains and just hooked it in. So I like how Kathy did this binding. The next one I'll do, I think I'm going to leave it solid just be for change. But I really like this idea because you can, you can hook. I just took some uh, ribbon that matches here, took a little bit of twine, tied it, and then I took twine and made a bow. And then I hooked this on. It was an easy way to get a dangle on. Through so I'm using basically what I'm doing is I'm using up a lot of my supplies. I've decided, you know, you work hard for your money. I've bought a ton of things because I love them, but I'm not getting into my scrapbook room enough to use them up fast enough. So I am focusing on using all of my papers that I already have. I don't need to be my own scrapbook store. I'm going to try to get that done because you know our manufacturers are always going to have more wonderful things. And I personally really just want to use up my products and then buy some new ones and stay current that way. So, this is the book. I did the vertical. The only thing that I did different on, from the tutorial is I made this little binding piece smaller just on this one. I'm going to make it larger next time like the instructions say. But I didn't want to decorate this for my first one. I wanted it to just more be your IB focused on the page. But I love both versions. So, what I did is the bags that I use, in case you're interested, I used, and I hope I'm not blinding you here with the cellophane, the Celebrate It bags from Michaels. And just so you know that there's uh, 12 in a bag. And what it says on the envelope here, or the packaging says 4.7 inches by 2.8 by 8.9. I use the smaller bags. Um, I kind of had to size down from the instructions. The instructions talk about the larger bags and or making a larger bag if you have the We Are Memory Keepers board. But I wanted to use up what I had, like I said, and I have quite a few of the paper bags. So that's what I did. So the front side here, just decorated I, the punches so that you know what type of punch I used, um, is the 
Large Bat Flourish from EK Success. I have no idea if these are still out there or not, but I'm going to show you what I have anyway in case you want to kind of go off of that. So I did this. This is just a, a mat. This is the pocket. The little embellishments here, um, I used my silhouette and um, cut them out, and then I just put some of the... Um, what do you call that? <laughs> oh, I think I used Stampin' Up's version, but it comes from um, Tim Holtz. Duh. It'll come to me. You know, it's a menopause moment. What can I say? Um, I think this was called Crystal Effects from Stampin' Up, and Tim Holtz has one too. And then, so the, the way that it's designed is you have your paper bag here, so your base is the paper bag, and then this flips open and it has magnets in here. So I made a couple of different um, photo mats. Each one, each page is the same. This has a little pocket. This is a tag. What I did was I kind of folded this over, layered it, and and made it look that way. Put some buttons on, and then you've got a mat here, which comes and goes. And then also, this is what I did for my tag was. I wanted the little faces, I'm sure you can see them, I wanted the little faces peeking out, so I used some of my old Stampin' Up! stamps, and um, I made my mats like this, and then the back can be plain, but I made the front so that they're small little ones. And it's really, holds actually a ton of photos, and um, just to give you, before we go through the rest of these, just to give you an idea, what I also did was I alternated my colors. I think you could probably see this way. So I did every other page with a certain cardstock so that it kind of had the same theme. So when I open them, they're alternating green, red, green, red. And it's kind of more of a, it was a cherry cobbler. Uh, was the name of the Stampin' Up! card stack that I used. And like I said, everything is going to be a lot of used up supplies that I have here. I used to be a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, so I still have a lot of card stock. I love the card stock, but I'm not using it, and that's silly. So I'm focusing. Hopefully I'm going to continue focusing. So anyway, each page is the same. I just dec So I decorated them similar, but I just changed certain things on them. So I did a different stamp on each page. So I won't necessarily walk you through each one, but you're going to be able to see that I did alternate or kept it the same and just changed it up a little bit. So each one has a different little idea. The second page, so this page looked like this, so as you flip, you'll see the same page is the same style. This one has the same style. Then the second one that I changed it up was I did my little ghosts on the flap. And how I did these was on another old die that... I've actually used to death, to be honest with you. It's a Ghost Number no. 2 from Sizzix, and you can tell. I mean, I even lost a little foam where the eyes were. I've used him so many times. But I used this guy, and I made my ghost. I put him on a thin piece of chipboard and uh, wrinkled up some paper, adhered it on, actually used um, like a sticker, the sticker uh, machine, and put it on, and then I inked it around the edges. And uh, I had put a little bit of black backing for the eyes, so he looks kind of mysterious and ghosty. Now this side of the page, this is the other part of the paper bag, so I did use the decorative paper, and this is an old Stampin' Up! paper from probably 2011, maybe. And then I did just some little accents here and there, left it plain here. The one thing that I did find, and it could just be me, but I found that there was a little bit more wear coming from this pocket, and I didn't want this to tear on the paper bag. And like I said, it could just be me. I mean, I actually officially caught my finger on it once, and it started to tear, and I thought, oh, that's not good. So I decided to kind of punch out some circles and do a little reinforcement here. So I kind of did a circle punch, folded it in half, and slipped it in and glued it so that it gave it a little bit extra security there. So that's another tip if anybody's making this album and you want a little more security here. Um, that's what I did. And for these, I think these were, um, I'm almost positive these were like labels. So they were small dies too, like I, steel dies, flat dies, and I just laid them. These were from Stampin' Up! also. So this one's still the same. I just, I kept 
this the same on all of them, but then I, as I showed you, I changed it up every other for the decoration here. And so same idea. So you'll see that I kind of followed the same format. I wanted it to be kind of uniform, but I changed the colors and alternated the colors. I kind of wanted it not to be too busy. I wanted the, the pictures of the Halloween moment to be more the focus, but I still wanted it to be complimentary. So it looks a little plain, but once photos are in, hopefully I'll get some for my grandson. He lives in Missouri, and I would love to be able to put those photos in this album. So there's this page. So I'll just go through, and I'm not going to walk you through each one now because it's still the same idea, but you can kind of see the colors anyway in what I did and the little changes that I did to each one. So different background papers, but made them complementary with the oncoming page. So I try to cut my papers and set them up, and I lay them in the raw pages, and then I play around before I set things on because I, I will pretty much know what I like as I do it. And then I add my small embellishments later. I don't decorate my pages one whole page at a time. I make the base pages. I decide what papers I want on them. I play around until I get those the way I want them. I'll adhere them on. Then I'll make my embellishments and I'll rotate through how I want my embellishments to go. And that kind of gives you an idea of how I scrapbook. Um, but sometimes and then I just do a whole variety on and, and I'll, I'll decorate as I go but most of the time you'll see my pages will be I'll, that's the process that I'll use. Well I hope you liked it. It was fun sharing it with you today and I hope you'll try one. They're really fun to do. So until I see you again, say it with ink guys.